When you come to practice meditation, tell yourself that you put all your baggage out at the door. You don't have to carry it in here. All your thoughts about what you've done today, what you're going to do tomorrow. Anything past or future, tell yourself it's not relevant right now. What's relevant is what you're immediately sensing right here, right now. What is that? Well, there's the breath coming in and out. You can sense the body here. As for the other sense doors, we close them down. The eyes are closed. You can even close your ears. You don't have to listen to the Dharma talk. As I've said many times before, the Dharma talk is here as a fence. If you leave the breath, you run into the fence, which reminds you to go back to the breath. Don't let the talk interfere with your breathing. And allow the body to relax. And John Suat once noted that there's a paradox in what we're trying to develop here as we get the mind to settle down. On the one hand, they talk about the mind being soft and malleable. And on the other hand, it's talk, we say that the mind has to be strong. So strong in the sense that you're not going to let yourself get waylaid by other thoughts. You're going to focus on the breath, focus on the immediate sensation of the body right here, right now. Try to elaborate that as little as possible. Just direct sensation, the breath coming in, the breath going out. You feel it right here. And you feel the different sensations in the body to let you know, you know where your arms are, where your legs are, where your head is. And don't try to fill in anything more than what you actually sense. That's a good exercise right there. We have a lot of ideas that we bring into the present moment, perceptions about the shape of the body, how we should be breathing, where we should be feeling the sensation of the breathing. And if you really look at what you've got right here, right now, you begin to see how much that is something that's brought in from the past. And if you let go of those pre preconceived notions, what have you got? That's an interesting thing to explore right there. When you think about it, you find things softening up a little bit. A lot of the tension with which you hold the body in order to make it fit into your preconceived notion of what you should be feeling right now gets put aside. And as you allow yourself to become more and more sensitive to the feeling of breathing, a lot of the tension in the body can begin to relax. You're not here trying to prove anything or to force anything. You're here to Explore. What have you got right here, right now? If there's any sense of tension or tightness you feel in any part of the body, just allow it to relax. You can think of the breath as a means of clearing out that tension. In other words, you breathe through it as you breathe in, and you allow it to go out with the breath as you breathe out. And as you let go of the tension here, you find that your sense of the body here in the present moment, your sense of awareness in the present moment, begins to open up. That's the softness, the malleability that we talk about in the state of concentration. The strength is that you don't allow yourself to get waylaid. Other thoughts are going to come in. When they come in, think of them just going right through you. Think of your body, think of your awareness as a big screen. Lots of little holes. It's porous. So when a sound comes in, when a thought comes in, whatever comes in, just let it go right through. You don't have to catch it. Just like a screen doesn't catch the wind. This way you can combine that sense of being tender. softened up, more sensitive, more malleable, with the strength 
strength lies in the, the wires in the screen. The softness is in the, the holes in the screen that allow things to go through the porous nature of your awareness. So you're not catching on to other things. When the breath comes in, when the breath goes out, you can come in and go out anywhere in the body at all. And then you can explore how it feels, what way of breathing feels best right now. Look into it. It's long breathing, short breathing, fast breathing, slow breathing. Hot, cool, and warm breathing, kind of like the porridge in Goldilocks. You have all kinds of choices, but what you want is the one that's just right. You're not trying to program yourself or force yourself into a particular technique. The, the recommendations in the technique are there to give you guides in your exploration, give you a sense of direction in what you're doing. But the things that you're going to see depend on your own powers of observation. As you adjust, with the, adjust the breath, as you adjust your focus, that act of adjusting is the beginning of discernment. You begin to see connections, with cause and effect. You breathe in a certain way, you choose to breathe in a certain way, and then there are certain sensations that result, either pleasurable or, or painful. That's the law of karma right there. Seeing how things arise, seeing how they pass away, seeing the connection between different things that arise and pass away. And the Buddha talks about the insight that leads to the first stage of awakening. It's seeing that all that is subject to origination is subject to cessation. That's an insight both into change and also an insight into causal connections. That word origination means that something has something that things arise together with causes. And simply the fact that that insight just goes deeper and deeper and more and more all-encompassing as you get further and further into the meditation. But it starts with precisely this act of adjusting. Changing this a little here, changing that a little bit there, and seeing what happens as a result, and trying to be as observant as possible, as sensitive as possible. This is why you're told not to force the breath or to hold the breath, but allow it to come in and out and then monitor it to see what feels best. Learn to listen to things as they are. This was the nature of the Buddha, was to see things as they are. He didn't come into his meditation trying to force things in line with a lot of preconceived notions. He was more an explorer, trying different approaches, seeing what results came about. He found what worked best for him, and he recommended it for us to follow. But in terms of the, in terms of the basic principles, they're all set out, but the details are things that we have to observe for ourselves. We've got our laboratory right here, the body sitting here breathing in and out right now. In other words, we're sitting here following his method, not just trying to program ourselves and to fit into what we've heard the Buddhist teachings were, but we follow the method that he proposed for learning the truths that lie within us. So it has to be a matter of your developing your own sensitivity, your own powers of awareness, and seeing precisely what it really is there. I've been looking through a field guide on nature observation. The author, when he was a child, was trained by an old Indian. There was one day where he asked the old Indian, why is it that you're not afraid of heat and cold? And the Indian looked at the kid for a while and finally said, it's because they're real. And this is our job as meditators, is to learn how not to be afraid of things that are real. Because ultimately we, decide, we discover that things that are actually real and pose no danger to the mind. The real dangers in the mind are our delusions. 
the things we make up, the things we use to cover up reality, the stories that we impose on things, the preconceived notions we impose on things. And when we're trying to live in those, then reality is threatening. Because it's always exposing the cracks in our ideas, the cracks in our ignorance, the cracks in our desires. We find that threatening. But if we learn to become real people ourselves, then reality poses no dangers. So this is what the meditation is for, is teaching yourself how to be real. To get in touch with what's really going on. To look at your sense of who you are and take it apart in terms of what it really is. To look at the things that you find threatening life. We'll see what they really are as well. When you when you really look, you see the truth. If you're true and you're looking, the truth appears. This is an important principle in the practice. This is why the Dharma is so precious. Only people who are true can see the truth. It's a quality of the mind that's not doesn't depend on figuring things out or being clever. It means being having an in integrity in your actions and integrity in your powers of observation. Accepting the truth as it is. Also accepting the fact that you play a role in shaping that truth, so you have to be responsible. You have to be sensitive to what you're doing and the results you get, and sensitive in learning how to be more and more skillful. So acceptance here. Many people think that acceptance means simply celebrating what's there already and saying you're good enough, that you don't have to make any changes. That's not the case at all. Acceptance means accepting the fact that you're responsible for a lot of your experience right now. You can't blame anybody else. And ultimately that's a good thing. If other people were shaping your experience, what would you do? You'd have to go around and please them all the time. But it's the fact that you are shaping your pleasures and pains here in the present moment. And some of the input that you've got to deal with, that comes from your past actions. But a lot of what you're experiencing right now comes from the way you shape things right here and right now. So learn to be open and honest with yourself about the role that you're playing here. And you find this, this is the direction where the meditation goes. It goes into greater and greater sensitivity into precisely this, what you're doing right now. And the fact that if you were really observant, you'd be much more sensitive in shaping your experience and there'd be less and less suffering. In fact, you can ultimately get to the point where there is no suffering put into your experience at all. That's how far the skill can go. It means being true in your observation. both admitting what you're doing to yourself and also admitting the results that come, and using your ingenuity to figure out how to do things better. So this is where that combination of sensitivity or softness or tenderness on the one hand and the strength come together. The sensitivity and lies in allowing yourself to see really refined things. The strength comes in admitting the truth for what it is. For it said that in this area where the ignorance that causes suffering lies, it's in our inability to be true to ourselves. But as the old man said, if you learn how to become a real person, then reality doesn't hold any dangers, doesn't hold any fears. As long as you're living in worlds that are false and made up, that's when reality holds, poses a threat. But when you strip away all that unreality in your mind, you find what's left is that there's nothing to fear. There are no dangers. It's just reality meeting with reality. So 
So the clearer you are about what you're doing right here, right now, the closer you get to that position where there is nothing to threaten you. There are no dangers in life. There is no suffering. So this simple exercise of watching your breath can go very deep, if you would allow it to. <laughs>